Hi guys, it's Chris from DataVids. We're talking about generics in C Sharp. This will be a quick video and hopefully very helpful for you. If you like it, please subscribe afterwards with that alarm bell below and we'll see you next time. Let's begin. System.collections.generic has a bunch of classes that are already created and ready to use. For example, list. So you could do list of type whatever class that you'd like. For instance, string my string equals new list of type string and then you could add strings to it if you were to do the same list but choose the type integer or double it automatically works then with doubles So you could add here a double. And it's not just list that falls into that category. We can throw in a T of any type. That system.collections.generic includes other things that are super helpful, data structures, full-blown data structures like queues, stacks, hash tables, uh, you know, sorted lists, etc. So take a look at that. Now, if you wanted to see a custom generic class, that's a little bit more interesting. So I've pasted for you here the example that you'll find in textbooks and all over the internet, which is just a basic generic class where you specify the type like so, and you put a property of that same type and you specify it again in the constructor, then you assign the value that comes into the constructor to your property, and then you can do whatever you'd like with that value, and it knows what the type is. And so if you wanted to execute this code, it's quite simple. What you'll do is you're going to go ahead and instantiate by putting the name of the class, giving it a value, but something new is right here, you're going to specify the type. So integer, string, etc., with your basic types, or you could put in a custom class name. We'll do both. Let's start with a basic, uh, basic type first, like integer equal to new. And my IDE dropped in integer for me, which was nice. And then let's put in our constructor value here. And then if we wanted to execute the right method that we have inside of it, we could take our instance, right. And I'll do a console.read line here so that the output will pause for you to see. And as you can see, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come in here. It's going to know that this is a, an integer based on t because we defined t when we ran that and typed it here and here, f5. 999, nine, nine. there you go. So let's show you that custom class portion now. Let's create another class just above this one for this example. Class ABC. Let's give it a couple of properties. Prop, tab, tab, int my properties, sounds good. Prop, tab, tab, string, my property too. And now let's get an instance of that. Let's do ABC, my ABC equal to new abc my abc dot say my property equal to xyz all right now we've got an instance with a value in it and now we could do instead of int we could do abc oops i reversed these let's put a two there so let's do instead of int we do abc and instead of 999 we do my abc so now you can see we're telling it that the type of the class is going to be ABC and passing my ABC to the constructor. <coughs> Excuse me. Quite simple, right? Now, one thing that's interesting is this write method. So if I was to look at this write method, it's going to do console.write line this dot value. Well, in this case, value isn't going to be that interesting, right? Let's run it anyway. Let's just look at it. See, demo dot, demo one dot ABC. So let's change it up a little bit. One thing we could do is we could change this from this dot value to this dot value as ABC, letting it know that it's an ABC. We'll put some brackets around that. And now we can gain access to those ABC properties. Now this is a little bit dangerous because we don't really know it's ABC. So we're going to change this to add a constraint to it. 
but I'm going to run it just to show you what it looks like because this will run because in fact this is an ABC. I mean it is an ABC because that's how we called it this time. So I hit F5. There you go. XYZ shows on the screen. Now if I was to say um, you know if I was to call this with an int again and I call it an int here and put five here or six and run it it gave an error because you know that wasn't really a safe way to cast it anyway so I'm gonna undo all that and put it back and we'll show you what those constraints look like okay so what you could do is where T is of type ABC now it doesn't have to be ABC it just means that it has to have that as the base class. So now I could do, I could take this out here, I could put it back to this dot value, and I could just do this dot value at my property too, because it's always going to be of type ABC. As you can see, there's no underline in red. If I run it with F5, XYZ is printing. Let me show you what I meant by what I said earlier. So you could have class XYZ that inherits from ABC where ABC is the base class uh, and then you could have you know something else here uh, public double ZZZ and you could have your getter and setter and we don't have to do anything with that and now we could make this in XYZ XYZ so now, as you can see, you could call it with as telling it it's an XYZ. And even though I have ABC as the instantiated value here, it's an XYZ. But because XYZ inherits from ABC, it's still considered an ABC here. So this should still work. I'm going to run it with F5, and XYZ still prints on the screen. All right. So, as interesting as that was, I personally don't use this that often. So the next thing I'm going to show you is generic methods that don't have to belong to a generic class. And we'll see what you think about that. Let's go with the classic Microsoft example. This code is from the Microsoft page, but I'll explain it very well to you. Um, in my work, I did something similar uh, where you didn't know the class that you're coming from, but you did know what the properties were. So there's something that you could do like that. But basically, as you can see here, you got the type specified just like you did in the class. You can specify the type in the method name. And then that same type is used three times here. Now, if you wanted a different type, you could do T2 like that. As you can see, it's underlined red because it's not found. But if you did T1, comma T2, then it could be different types. But we want it to be the same type. So we just have T repeated. And LHS and RHS, if you're not familiar with it is a common programming shorthand for left hand side right hand side so this is just a swap here we're swapping and because these are both the same type we're able to do it so let's give an example here let's do um, string ABC and we've got string def and let's do swap and we'll do uh, of type string because they're both string. And we're going to do ABC DEF. And now I am going to put a breakpoint right here. Ah, basic types you need to pass with correct. If it was a custom class that wasn't a basic type, you wouldn't need to do that. We'll run it real quick. And now let's look. If it swapped it, ABC should contain DEF now. And it did. DEF contains ABC. So that worked. You could do the same thing, obviously, based on what you've learned earlier in this video with int and int. And just put some numbers here. 9 and 4. If I was to run that. Oh, got an error. 
Ah, we still have string here. Int. Run that. And if I hover over ABC, it has nine instead of four, and DEF has four instead of nine. So that's that's kind of a, a quick and dirty for generic methods. I'll show you that two parameter one now. So if I put T and T2, now the types can be different, and it's showing me purple because it's still running. Um, I don't know that swap would still make sense. Let's do something more interesting with that. Let's just uh, print them. Let's do uh, console dot right line LHS. RHS. And now this could be a string. And let's make it hello. And now this is going to be, and this is how you do this. Just like you have a comma here with the two types, you put the two types here. So you do int string. And they should see them both printed. And I think we need a read line so that it pauses. And F5. For and hello, even though they're different types. And even though this method did not know what the types were, um, it still worked. Let's talk about generic delegates next. Here I've got delegate void my delegate of type T, T item. And you could set it up this way, where you just kind of instantiate it this way. And you choose your method name. You don't have to spell it out like we used to. And then the only place you need to specify the type is here. Now, this may be useful in some scenarios. Uh, in my experience, it's only been useful for me personally when I had a whole bunch of overloads here of different types. And I wanted to write some generic code, not really knowing what we're going to need next. So this may or may not be useful for you. And I'm sure you've got some better scenarios that this would come in handy or better ways of using this, feel free to include that in the comments below since this isn't necessarily commonly used by me. It might still be very commonly needed for you. So that's really all I've got for generics. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you, maybe for those beginners, and have a great day.